Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to look at our first conversation. Now, all through today, the theme is which way Nigeria? That is the question that we are asking. And we're saying that it's not enough for us to talk about it. We need to be about it using our voices and our platforms. Now, our first guest is someone who has volunteered not just his voice, his talent, his platform to pushing this message out. He's a creative director of the Blood on the Flag campaign, and he's also the director of one of the highest crossing films in Nollywood, which is a wedding party. And today, he's decided to join us to share with us the journey on creating the Blood on the Flag campaign. His name is Ni Akimulaya. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so Thanks. much for being Thanks for here. Having me. All right, so from movie director of The Wedding Party, now your creative director of Blood on the Flag campaign. Let's talk about first, before we go into the main conversation, let's talk okay. about your journey into directing real quick. Tell us about it. Oh, well, I, um, I started off almost like everyone in the industry, you know, from the bottom up, worked in studios as production assistant, as an editor. And um, luckily, you know, um, the boss I was working with said, hey, you know what, you could take up directing. Seems you have it, and I thought about it. And um, then I had all kinds of stories to tell, um, one of which was um, a science fiction film, Kajola, back in 2009. And um, I just went out and I made my first film. And when I made the film and I got all the responses that I needed, it kind of gave me the boost, you know, to start telling stories my own way. And that's practically how the journey started. That's brilliant. So what would you say fueled your motivation to carry out the Blood on the Flag campaign? OK, um, so uh, it's... Um, I think I started looking at the trend, um, especially how celebrities and you know people in entertainment react to some of the things in the country, particularly um, killings and all this. And uh, it, it, it was it, it felt a bit laid back, you know, the attitude. And usually, it would just be oh, okay, people are dead. This, let's put a black picture, you know, online. Let's you know look for a candle image on the internet and put online. And I thought we were not doing justice to these things and we were not particularly using the tools that we had as creatives. I mean, um, um, in, in, in Nazi Germany, you know, the government would create propaganda videos just to get the people, you know, excited and interested, you know, in fighting and, you know, they, they know how to use the media creatively like that. And so I thought about it, why don't we use what we're good at, okay, to convey an even stronger um, message? Right, the original idea was that we would make these videos and we'll put them on billboards, you know, all over Abuja. But of course, we couldn't, you know, fund that. Or I couldn't fund that. So I thought that I would speak to a few of my colleagues and say, hey, uh, these images are gory. We don't like to see them, but that's exactly why we should, you know, make ourselves look like them so that we can, you know, remind the government, remind everybody that it can happen to anybody, regardless of how beautiful, how rich, whatever it is. I mean, people were coming from wedding receptions from Bauchi and got attacked. We are all in, vulnerable to the insecurities Yeah, exactly. In so if we keep thinking, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's the fight between uh, herdsmen and, and, uh, and um, farmers, then we're missing the or point. We keep entirely. looking at the fact that we're in Lagos and we, have, we think it's happening. Oh, in, yeah. It's so it's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's... Um, I mean, that's, that's a delusion to think that it can happen to us in Lagos. You know, it's a ticking clock. It's only a matter of time. That's how I like to think about it. That's how I like to project. So I said, you know what, guys, um, I will get a couple of makeup artists and we will remind everybody. So you're, you're looking at your favorite actress and she's looking, you know, mangled and mauled and, you know, she's looking dead on screen. How would you react to that and that was what we wanted to trigger and we hoped that it was going to trigger a conversation and uh, coincidentally the um, Enough is Enough Nigeria campaign was going on and they wanted to do a protest and I thought maybe this can help fuel what they were trying to do but they were doing it in Abuja so we could just the only thing we could do here was just get all the videos out there and then tell everyone to join yeah. Whatever the protest is. All right, happening. we'll still speak some more about the protest, but let's talk about our, our attitude as Nigerians to the crisis that is on our hands. Do you think that we've given it enough attention? Seeing the fact that it, it, it became closer to home after the Ote dollar fire, but before then, the northeastern part of Nigeria has literally been on fire, but we haven't been saying as much. Do you think we've been doing enough? Oh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've become desensitized. So if you notice, even international communities, they don't send us condolences again. Like they've moved on. Like you know, maybe these people are not even serious. Maybe they are. They are they, maybe they are not really dying. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there are even people in the government. You know, sitting down and drinking their alcohol and like, are you sure people are really dying or they're making it up? Also, um, because we're very, um, we're we're like in our teething stages when it comes to politics and governance. The bulk of what our politicians 
are doing are finding ways to score points over this killing. So we're really laid back about it. We're not doing anything. And, you know, sadly, we have gotten used to it. So there's no active... Um, uh, there's no, nobody's rising every time this, this thing mm. is happening and it's really sad. And what we also find as well that often happens, and unfortunately it is very sad, people start campaigns like the Blood on the Flag campaign, which by the way is probably one of the most brilliant campaigns we have seen in a very long time. Honestly, it really moved me. Now people start campaigns, but after the campaign there's no continuation. The campaign comes, it runs for a period of, let's say, two weeks, and then everybody forgets about it and moves on. Do you have any plans for continuation with regards to Blood on the Flag? Well, um, it, well, campaigns like, you know, the Blood on the Flag campaign is meant to trigger something. You know, so there, there are reasons why you do campaigns like this. So you could decide to say, oh, you want to do um, Occupy a campaign and that would physically make you have to go to a place and set yeah. it up and, you know, make blockades. But what I wanted to do with this one was I was doing it with the hope that um, press, you know, and all the people concerned would actually jump on that and replicate it as much. So you see, we, we actually made a, you know, a DIY video on how people can create some of these things. But we get, we get distracted quickly, you know, as a country. You can be running a very intense campaign and someone will start up a trend about somebody sleeping with somebody and it just, it just you know, it takes all of us, you know, um, off course. Yeah. So what I'm hoping to do is, as a build up to the election, okay, to think creatively about how we can visually do more like this, even if it doesn't translate physically, at least it can get us talking. And that's important. That's a good place to start. So we have a couple of people who want to become presidents in the country. We, how can we use media to call our attention to what's important, to what the people should look out for when they are voting? You know, some of those really key issues. So that's the trend I want to first start. But I'm, I'm also hoping that, I mean, this is like the first media house that will be contacting me in Nigeria about it. So when she called me, I was like, oh, okay, fantastic. Maybe somebody, maybe some people are paying attention and want to take it up from there. I'm hoping that um, if I, as an entertainer, you know, I'm thinking about using the tools that I have, maybe you can start getting every other person in different Creates sectors. Creates a ripple effect. Yes, to, to think about, you know, what they can do, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're, um, um, you want to send a strong message because ultimately the goal of this is to make governance uncomfortable for people who want to take advantage of people. In fact, what I said when I, when I put out the campaign and some people were trying to shut me down was that if it was up to me, I would put big screens, you know, in key places where the politicians are, I will hijack all their events and put all these images. We'll definitely you know. put out these images shortly. <laughs> we have some videos that we're going to play eventually. But let's give us an insight into the day of the shoot when you had the celebrities gathered okay. with blood smeared all over them. How was the emotion like? Oh, well, uh, first shout out to all the celebrities, you know, who came because I, I, I wasn't even sure they were going to make it. I, um, I, I said that I was, um, I reached out to the Emi Okonla, a fantastic guy, and I said, you know what, um, call a few of your friends. So we thought that maybe 10 people will show up. And um, I got, I, so I went online and I said, if you're a special effects artist and you would love to work for free, I'll pay for cost of production, but, you know, you would love to be part of this course, come and I got seven people. So in my head, I'm like, maybe two, three hours will be done. We ended up making up close to 60 people that day, and we worked from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. the wow. next day. I think the last, the, uh, the last of the celebrities that came was Frank Dunga. He came around 11.30 in the night. And I, I, I mean, a lot of people called me and said, oh, why didn't you tell us we would have, you know, we were close by, we would have joined this. So it, that told me something that... It's re it really, it's about taking the lead, taking the initiative. I mean, it did cost money, you know, to do, to put together, you know, to get all the equipment and everything to set it up. But if you take the, and we, we all need to stop talking, you know, and actually it's easy to go online and share a hashtag. You know, it's easy for us to sit down and put a camera on our faces and say fancy metaphors about the killings. But how about we do something? How about we actually put our money where our mouth is, you know? So... I'm open to all kinds of ideas on how we can take this, but it was, it was really rewarding. It okay, was rewarding. Yes. I mean, the next day, you know, that was the trending thing. You know, everyone put it out there, and we were getting calls, and it, it got a lot of people involved in the campaign. We're now talking to some, you know, um, newspaper outlets, and it was what I wanted. The yeah. discussion has started. 
Okay, I'm hoping that I can find time to do a lot more. And most importantly, it can trigger that kind of response amongst other sectors. Okay, and what has the response been like so far to the campaign? Well, so far, um, um, from... So let me talk about how people mm. have responded to it. So the good thing is that we weren't sure if people were going to get the message, but they actually did, you know, which is fantastic. So the message was very clear, which was what I wanted. And the message was, it can happen to anybody. Mm. Okay, that was the message. Of course, we had a few people who felt, uh, you know, well, blood, why are you showing blood, blah, blah, blah. And um, of course, you know, media houses, I'd be careful not to put it out there. But that's exactly why we did it, so that you understand how painful, you know, it is, you know, to see this thing. So if you think it's disgusting, you know, to see your favorite celebrity lying in blood, now imagine, you know, a mother who comes back you know, from the market. Got to do something uncomfortable. Exactly. So think about that when you're thinking about it. But I'm glad the way people are. People have reached out to me. And in fact, a lot of people have said, oh, you know what, how can we use this campaign to talk about sexual harassment, to talk about rape? You know, what can we do? So that's saying that we can actually use, you know, the tools of media, you know, the way we have it right now. I mean, and, and go beyond what, I mean, I, I make films. I make funny films. I make films that make money. But we can actually use these tools for social causes. And um, if that is the end goal, then I'm happy. I, I really happy. like that you're mentioning the fact that people have been contacting you, asking you what other stories we can, narratives we can push out. And I was about to ask you, you know, what narratives you're planning to do? You have any plans for the PVCs? Because unfortunately, we have elections coming in. We're putting out the information out there. But I still have had conversations with educated people who said they will not get their PVC and they will not vote because their vote will not count. Yeah, uh, well, um, I, a couple of people reached out and said, uh, in fact, the first question they asked was, how can we convert this blood on the flag into a get a PVC campaign? And I thought they're two different things. Okay, we constantly need to be talking about security in the country, and security has, everyone has to be involved, okay? Uh, with the PVC thing, yes, you know, I do have a couple of ideas, you know, hopefully that we can raise. I know it's very disheartening, and, and people are really, you know, people have thought about it, so even if I get my PVC, who am I going to vote for? Mm. And uh, all those, you know, lingering questions in the air, but we will do a couple more like that, but we'll do one sorry, leading to the election, and part of it might be the PVCs. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Now, we do also, um, unfortunately, we can't be joined by Yemi Adamolikum at the same time, who works with Enough is Enough Nigeria. But last week, EIE went out and protested. So, of course, we have the footage for you. Let's take a look at that. And when we come back, we'll still be discussing some more about blood on the flag. Section 14, 2B of the Nigerian Constitution states, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary, primary purpose of government. The spate of killings, violent killings across Nigeria in the past six months, and indeed the past three years, have been worrisome. In the first six months of this year alone, more than 5,000 Nigerians have been killed in violent attacks by persons or groups described in various places as armed pastoralists, rustlers, bandits, thugs, political opportunities, any name you want to give them, but Nigerians are dying. In some cases, these perpetrators have decimated entire communities and the few social infrastructure which these communities depend on, including schools, hospitals, and places of worship. In nearly all of these cases, there have been neither arrest nor diligent prosecution. More troubling has been the lack of urgency and proactiveness on the part of government to end these killings and bring perpetrators, perpetrators to book. While the killings have been particularly pronounced in the middle belt of Nigeria, no region of the country has been spared from the spate of insecurity. From Benue to Kaduna, to Ebonyi to Cross River, from Zamfara to Plateau to Adamawa. And their frequency has escalated from month to month. We as citizens are appalled by government's failure to diligently protect lives and property. From community to community, the narrative of organized criminal groups attacking unarmed, vulnerable citizens and taking over their homes and communities has persisted. That is a video of Yemi Adamolekon, the executive director of Enough is Enough Nigeria. And she and a few other Nigerians who were tired of the status quo went to the streets of Abuja to protest a few days ago. And that is um, one of the clips we got from behind the scenes. How would you say that the response so far has been? Now, we're not looking at from individuals, but because we're seeing that from individuals, you've gotten massive response with regards to the Blood on the Flag campaign. But government officials... Now, I had reports that for the Enough is Enough Nigeria campaign, they were actually blocked 
blocked and prevented from passing by the police and that they won't allow them exercise their right to freedom of peaceful protest. How would you say that you've gotten responses from the government? And now you've mentioned also that Nigerian media has not really responded to this. So let's look at the government. Has there been any response so far? Well, we haven't gotten the kind of response we would need from the government. And it's sad because um, ideally these things should get the government to want to talk to the people, okay? But just like the Occupy protest, you know, at first people ignored it. People thought it was, you know, just a bunch of people looking for attention until it became something really big. And that's how this is going to start, okay? First they will ignore, okay? But at a point it's going to get really heavy and they will have no choice but to respond. And I'm hoping that, you know, more people will join these kind of campaigns, okay? You, I mean, you don't expect that you will just... I mean, this is, they know how to manipulate, you know, uh, the masses. You don't expect mm. that. You just go out and say, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ha, you know, and then the government will just start crawling. It's not going to happen. And, you know, we've learned, we've been subdued over time, you know. One of the sad news is that student unions don't exist, you know, anymore. If it was back in the days when I was in school, by now you'd, I mean... Uh, you know, the whole streets of Abuja and Lagos would, would be teeming. I would with think that a lot of, of them have now been politicized because yes, everybody's looking you know, for So it's not happening. But I know that when I did this, like when we did the blood on the flag campaign, a few students from the University of Abuja called and said, Hi, hey, you know what, Mr. Nee, can you arrange a bus for us? We want to gather a few students and go out and join the protest. So maybe that's how. You know, it starts and yeah. gradually we, it can become absolutely something. because me. The thing is, I've spoken to so many young people who do want to get involved, but the problem is they don't know exactly how to get involved. I've had people say, "What can I really do? Like, I want to do something, but I just don't know what to do." Because people's fear is that they're not going to be heard, right? So, if you could give some advice to young people out there who are watching right now and want to kick off a campaign like you did, what would you say to them? So, first, when you hear that there's a protest, when you hear that there's a protest. In in your area, okay, you should go because um, uh, you know government officials are scared of numbers. You know they don't they don't they get very uncomfortable with numbers. Why? Because anything can happen, okay. And but uh, you know there's no reason you know to be afraid because you're fighting for the right cause. You're fighting for the right things, okay. So I would say that um, one of the easy routes we know right now, you know, is protest. But I also say that it's important that we also as citizens you know in our dealings with government officials you know let us remind them that we do not like what they're about okay so if a government official comes to your areas it's nothing to be happy and smiling and you know uh, uh, gallantly go welcome you know all those things need to stop that's how you can send that message strongly okay you have people in in other parts of the world you would have uh, 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 shopping outlets decide not refuse service, you know, to government officials. Okay, and that's a way of protesting. So we need to think about, you know, unique ways because, you know, there is one way which is just clamp, you know, going to the streets and screaming. But there are individual ways where we can shut down, you know, uh, 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 all the wrong things the government, you know, is doing. Make it ungovernable for them every time they take advantage. So you need to think about how you interact with the government and how that interaction can remind them, okay, that they're doing the wrong thing. This is no time, you know, to laugh at the president's joke. This is no time to entertain any political candidate who doesn't have something tangible, you know, to talk about. If, if, a, if a political candidate or a government official is in your area, in your school, or in your community, and they don't have anything tangible, you walk them out of the place. That is how you should do and it. And it's also not the time to be deceived because cough, cough, campaign. We need to really oh, ask yes. the right <laughs> questions. And we also need to put out there that at this point, Peaceful protest is one of your rights. So the quote, the key word there is peaceful. As you're getting involved in this protest, please do not by any means encourage any sort of violence. Ensure that your, your protest is as peaceful as can be. You're out there trying to get a message heard, and you can't do that by achieving violence. You don't counter a wrong by doing another wrong as well. Now let's look at Nollywood. Do we foresee a time where we would start to see stories, you know, on the, on the big screens, we start to see stories like this, stories that are telling of the ills in our society. We find that people want to be happy. So when people find that they are, they are sad movies, people don't really like to go for sad movies because they already feel like I'm living in a sad reality. 
the movie is an escape for me. And movie makers would like yourself, you want to make money. So do we foresee a time when Hollywood will really start to tell the stories in its entirety of how gory it is, the killings, the deaths, and that people will go out en masse to watch? And also the leeway as well that Nollywood movie producers, producers can get. Because if I can recall, when Half of a Yellow Sun was coming out, it did take a while before we got to see it in Nigeria. And that was for reasons that are obvious to us now, you know? Okay, uh, uh, well, the, the, the Nigerian audience dynamic is a very interesting one. We've not even figured it out completely. So, um, let me give you an example. So, um, post-World War II Japan, okay, uh, a lot of the films, you know, the animations that came out there were very reflective, you know, of post-war issues, you know, and they were really sad stories. And those were the things people wanted to watch. But Nigeria is a totally different dynamic, okay? We, are, we look for the fastest, quickest way to be happy, okay? We don't, want to, um, we don't want to be reminded of our situation, even though it's staring us in the face. So that's a dynamic that we've not been able to um, figure out and say, uh, um, let's make you know, movies with really strong messages and still get everyone to want to come and see it. But you're right, you know, it has to happen because we also need to be a voice, you know. Uh, we need to reflect what's going on. We need to be some form of mirror um, of society. So I'm hoping that um, I, I, even if we can't do it in large scales, like, you know, and because if you're going to make a cinema film, you're mm. going to spend a lot of money. And it's, most of the time, it's not your money, it's an investor's money. But we can use short outlets, you know, like what we did, you know, with the Blood on the Flag campaign, you know, short stories, you know, social media type uh, right. um, things like that, and put these kind of messages out. So to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.